everyone, Miss Hannah here, and it's time for some bedtime stories. I hope you've had a really good day. It's been kind of gross here today, so we've been kind of stuck inside. Been kind of gross looking outside. But I hope you've had a good day, and today we're going to read some very interesting books. Most of them kind of based on um, food. So we're going to start out our first book, The Cool Bean. And this one's by Jory John and Pete Oswald. And it's published by HarperCollins. So let's start out and just snuggle up and get a little closer to you. All right, the cool bean. The cool bean. Start out here. Watch out, here come the cool beans. The cool bean. Oh yeah, check out how they move. Look at the way they swagger. Not at their sunglasses. Yow! The cool beans are known all over school, from house to house, across town, beyond county lines. In the older days, last year, we were all one big pot of beans. We were a mixed bag, but somehow it worked. Yup, those were the good old days. And then we've stopped seeing each other as much. That's just how it is sometimes. You spend less time together even though you're not totally sure why. I watched as the beans I knew so well, the beans from my own pod, became the cool beans. Oh, they were so cool. One of them could play the guitar, cool. One of them could draw the best superheroes, cool. One of them could jump higher than any bean I've ever known, cool. He was a jumping bean. Me? Well, I've mostly stayed the same. Sure, I made some small changes. I wore sunglasses, too big. I slicked my hair back, too slick. I strutted around, oh, I swaggered, oof. I was still picked last for everything. My clothes never seemed to fit. I snorted when I laughed. <laughs> I walked into stuff. I was an uncool bean for sure. I started thinking of myself is just a common bean with no special skills I couldn't compete, so I didn't even try. I'll never, I'd never be a cool bean. It seemed like there were two types of beans in the world. There were the cool beans and the beans like me, Laguma Beach. The days all blended together. I lived my life and things were just okay. I took tests and ate lunches and mostly kept to myself. The cool beans continued being cool. I mean, sure, I missed them a bit, but it's not like I was going to say anything. I felt like all that coolness had gotten in the way of our friendship. And that's how it went until one day. I was in the cafeteria and I dropped my lunch on my loafers. Oh, no, not again. But then something sort of miraculous happened. Out of nowhere, one of the cool beans helped me clean it up. He didn't even say anything. He just gave me a nod. That was it. Later, I was out on the playground. I tripped and scraped my knee and maybe cried a little bit. Everyone saw it. Another one of the cool beans came to my side, and without a word, he dusted me off. Bean ditches. That afternoon, I was sitting in class. I wasn't really paying attention. I didn't notice, but our teacher had called on me. Everybody stared. I sat there in silence. Nobody said anything. And then, then, everybody just laughed at me. That was it. After today, I was officially a has-been. But then, one of the cool beans stood up 
and came over to me. Everybody watched. She leaned in close and whispered, Hey, the teacher just asked you to read from page 32. Then she gave me a quick wink, ping, and went back to her seat. It was a small gesture, sure, but it was also everything. I walked home with a goofy smile on my face. Here, <laughs> I smiled all the way through dinner. Here, <laughs> that day made all the difference. It was a day that could have been really bad if not for the kindness of the cool beans. It gave me a shred of confidence. That shred of confidence continued to grow. Somebody had my back, or a few somebodies. After that, I started hanging out with the cool beans again. How have you been? Get it? How have you been? <laughs> but not all the time. But sometimes. At lunch, after school, even on the weekends. Throughout all of this, I realized that it's not about how you look or any of that other silly stuff. It's about a wink or a nod or a smile at just the right moment. It's about dusting somebody off, helping them up again, and pointing them in the right direction. You need a hand? Yes, please. Now that's cool. The end. Now, our next book, let me get the straw away from my cat. The next book is I'm a Baked Potato. And this one's by Elise Primavera with art by Juana Medina. This book is by Chronicle Kids Publishers. I'm a Baked Potato. There was a lady who loved baked potatoes. She ate one every day. She even had a potato garden in her backyard because she hated to run out. The lady also loved dogs, and so one day she went and got one. She chose him because he seemed to fit so nicely in her arms. You remind me of something, she said to the dog. What could it be? No, kitty. The dog was smooth. The dog was warm. She could have eaten him right up. That's exactly it, she exclaimed. You're just like a big potato. And that was how she told him first, what she told him first thing every morning. You're my little baked potato. Through the day, she called for him. Here, baked potato. Or commented, roll over, baked potato. And so on. The lady was an excellent pet owner. No, kitty. She and the dog ate all their meals together by the fire. She let him sleep under the covers. She loved the dog even more than she loved baked potatoes. Then one day, the lady went out. The dog went out too. Where's the lady, he wondered. He walked down the driveway. He looked everywhere for her. He walked farther and farther. Where's the lady? He came to a small house. Big dog ran to him and barked nastily. Who are you? He snarled. I'm a baked potato, the dog replied. You look more like a groundhog to me. Go away before I bite you. The dog had never heard such yelling. Do you know where the lady's at? But the big dog just shouted, Scram! Now, the dog wandered farther down the street. He looked all around. Was she around the corner? Was she over in the next hill? Where's the lady? The sky became dark. The air became cold. The dog became worried. It began to rain. The dog thought of how it felt to be held in the lady's arms. He thought of how right now they'd be sharing a meal together by the fire. He thought of the bed where she let him sleep under the covers. The lady, he called, where are you? A fox heard his plaintive cry. Who are you? I'm a groundhog. The dog had never been so upset. You look more like a nice plump bunny rabbit to me. The fox licked his lips. I just love bunny rabbit. What a relief, said the dog. Come with me, said the fox. 
and he led the dog to his creepy house. The fox turned on his oven. There we go. You'd be good with carrots and onions, he muttered. Who are carrots and onions, the dog asked. Do they know where the lady is? The fox had a devilish grin. We shall ask them, shall we? Just then a voice said, What do you think you're doing? Right at the fox's door stood an old owl. The owl shook his head at the fox, who he knew to be a coward. Who are you? The owl asked the dog. I guess I'm a bunny rabbit, the dog said, his lips trembling. The owl gave the fox a dirty look. Come with me. Then he took the dog by the paw and brought him to his cheerful house. He looked into the dog's eyes. You are not a bunny rabbit. So I'm a groundhog. The dog had never been so confused. The owl shook his head. I don't think so. I knew it, the dog said. I'm a baked potato. You are a dog, said the owl. Bing! The timer on the owl's oven sounded. This is a baked potato. The dog sniffed it. It smelled like the lady. The dog was taken aback. You seem to know a lot, he said. Do you know where the lady is? I don't know that, the owl said, but I do know that dogs are very good at finding things, especially with their noses. Like the lady? The dog asked hopefully. Like the lady, the owl replied firmly. He followed it away from the cheerful house, past the creepy house, past the small house, then around the corner and down the street. Okay, Let's see there. Oh, oh, sorry. Soon he could hear her calling, baked potato, baked potato. Sure enough, standing in the porch light was the lady. He jumped into her arms and she showered him with kisses my little baked potato, she cooed, squeezing him tight. I should have known you'd like walks in the rain. You're just like me. It was good to be back, but the dog would never be the same. He knew he was not a baked potato or a groundhog or a bunny rabbit. He knew exactly who he was. I'm just like me. The end. Okay. Now, if my cat will let me, we will try to read some more books. Now, this one is about a potato, and his name is Rot, the Cutest in the World, by Ben Clanton. And this one's published by Simon & Schuster. This is Rot. He sure is cute, isn't he? Oh, no, what's Rot doing? He's probably the cutest creature in this book, maybe even the cutest in the whole world. Hello, this is Rot. He is a mutant potato. Like most mutant potatoes, Rot loves mud, eating stuff, nom 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 nom, checkers, king me, fool, and all sorts of games and contests. Staring contest, ready, sit, go! So when Rot sees a sign that says cutest in the world contest, he can't wait to enter. Cutest in the world contest. Enter now, this way. Rot is sure he'll win. He is so sure he sings a winning song. I'm the cutest in the world, the cutest in the world, the cutest, cutest, cutest in the world. Contestants, line up here. My ears, my poor ears. What is that awful sound? Then Rot sees the other contestants. There is an itty bitty baby bunny with floppy ears, a little widow bewitching bewhiskered cuddly kitten, and an eeny weeny peek and peppy jolly jellyfish. The other contestants didn't think much of Rot's chances. My poor adorable eyes, it's hideous. Ick, I think I'm gonna be sick. Whoa. Rot considers eating everyone. He would win for sure if he were the only contestant. Nom, 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 nom. Gulp, eek. 
but it wouldn't be a very nice thing to do and would probably give him indigestion. Poof! Maybe Rot would be cuter if he had big ears like the bunny. Look, I look like you. Um, no. Or maybe it would help if he had whiskers like the kitten. They're kind of itchy. You look ridiculous. Take those off. Perhaps if he were pink and peppy like the jellyfish. We're pink and we're happy. None of it makes Rot feel any cuter. So Rot decides to just be himself. He doesn't stand a chance. Is he actually going up there? That takes guts. Last up, Rot. Rot steps on stage and struts his stuff. Da -da 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 he smiles his biggest smile. Yeah, jeez. He shows his best side. Oh! What do the judges think? Drum roll, please. <laughs> Rod is the cutest in the world. I think I'm in love. He is perfect. Seriously? No way. Huh? Rot gets a great big trophy. Ooh. It is so shiny that Rot can see his reflection. And Rot thinks he looks like... The cutest in the world. Oh, that contest was totally rigged. Wait, are you wearing a unibrow? Um, do you like it? The end. Well, guys, thank you for sharing your bedtime with me and for reading some bedtime stories with me. I hope you really enjoyed it. I look forward to seeing you again on Thursday where we can read some more bedtime stories and enjoy together. So I'll see you then and I'll see you soon. So good night. Don't forget to brush your teeth.